Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to Brian VRM and welcome to another Spider-Man film review. We're getting very close. We have three Spider-Man films to review before Spider-Man No Way Home premieres this weekend. We're moving on next to the second reboot to the franchise set within the MCU starring Tom Holland, Spider-Man Homecoming. Let's get started. Directed by John Watts, Spider-Man Homecoming follows the events of Captain America's Civil War. Tony Stark has gifted Peter Parker with his own customized suit and works as kind of a protege of Tony Stark, reporting to both him and Happy Hogan. While balancing his school and personal life, Peter eventually stumbles upon a group of criminals that use alien tech to rob banks and perform heists and sell weapons under the radar. This group is led by Adrian Toomes, a.k.a. The Vulture. This film features short appearances from other Spider-Man foes, such as The Shocker, Aaron Davis, a.k.a. The Prowler, and Mac Gargan, the man who would become the Scorpion. I just want to start off by saying that this film is actually pretty good, but as a change of pace, I'm going to start with the things I wasn't a fan of. My main issues with this film are some of the directions they took with the Spider-Man character. I'm glad they hired an actor who was a teenager at the time to play a teenage superhero. I'm just not 100% a fan of certain directions they took. I mostly didn't like that Spider-Man was more of a protege to Iron Man. The suit was pretty cool and all, but I didn't like that his efforts to save people were because he was trying to impress Iron Man to hopefully become an Avenger. I just felt that undermined a big aspect of the character. His quest to do what's right was because of his moral obligation with the great power comes great responsibility thing. And again, his suit was cool, but I didn't like that Iron Man made it and was monitoring him. For me, I always liked in the comics or the other films that Spider-Man's costume and his tech were made from what little resources he had and his own intelligence. I also didn't really care for the Karen voice in his suit. I'm not surprised it was in the suit since Iron Man developed it, but I just think that could have been left out. I know this is all a new take on Spider-Man, but it was a little too much change for me. Out of all the Spider-Man films, I felt like this one was a little too comedic. Granted, I thought the jokes and the gags they used were pretty funny, but I've always noticed that Spider-Man was a serious story overall, and this approach was a little bit more silly than I'm used to. Now on to what I liked about this film. I really enjoyed the last half of it after Stark had confiscated his suit. There was a deleted scene that I wish made it into the final cut where Peter, despite not having his suit and his tech, still seeks to apprehend the Vulture because it's the right thing to do. And in the final cut, once he discovers the Vulture's true identity, he uses his original homemade suit and web shooters to take down the Vulture. And I thought that scene at the warehouse when he was trapped under the collapsed rubble was pretty powerful, with Peter having to prove to himself that he doesn't need a fancy Stark-made suit and gadgets to be a great hero and free himself from the debris. I also did appreciate that this was just a Spider-Man film and not another origin story. Sure, we get the occasional reference here and there, but I'm glad we didn't have to go all the way back to the beginning again, especially since we're all pretty familiar with how Spider-Man became Spider-Man. The acting was very good, and the film had a great cast. Tom Holland's performance was great. I'll be honest, he's not my favorite of the three to play Spider-Man, but he did a great job, and I honestly think he portrayed both Peter Parker and Spider-Man the best out of the three. And of course, you can't go wrong with Michael Keaton. I loved his take on the Vulture. I did like the direction they took with his character. Instead of being a grumpy old bald man from the comics, I feel like they gave him a story that we could sympathize with. He just wants to provide for his family and his friends. Of course, that doesn't excuse him killing people or stealing. Now with Spider-Man No Way Home coming out this week, I do recommend you check out this film. Again, it was a pretty good film with a decent story, but just wasn't a fan of some of the directions they took. I'm going to give Spider-Man Homecoming a B+. Hey, thanks so much for checking out this review, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you did, please be sure to hit that like button. And if you're enjoying my content and would like to stay updated for it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Be sure to stay tuned for my next Spider-Man film review, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Thank you all again so much, and I'll see you next time.